Hi everyone, welcome to your astrology forecast. Um, at the end of this video, if you guys are interested on getting your chart interpreted, and there's going to be a demo and a sample of what you can get from the report. So make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the video. And of course, we're running a little promotion. So stay tuned. Aquarius is a crazy month. It's a crazy month. <laughs> but I'm here. <laughs> we live in it. We live in it. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm here for. But anyhow, we're going to start your astrology forecast. I'm just crazy when it's Aquarius reading. I don't know. It's something with you. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. So I feel like it's just you. <laughs> no, it says the beyond. So okay, we crazy Aquarians here. So anyhow... We're going to start your um, October horoscope. Make sure to comment below if this was helpful. I hope it is. Um, this is going to be based on Aquarian Ascendant, okay? Insidereal Vedic Astrology. So what I do practice is Jyotish. And I love this, uh, this kind of reading because it just broadens the horizon for us. We just see things, you know, Jyotish is the science of light. And we see things that normally we won't be able to see, okay? So, you can follow your moon sign. Mm -hmm. It's fine if you would like to, but I suggest ascendant. And for the sun sign people, you're more than welcome to sit and relax and enjoy. But I do wish you know your ascendant sign because that's how it can help you. Mm -hmm. So, predictions are made based, based on the ascendant sign, never on the sun sign. Okay? So, um, other than that, I feel like we can uh, we can get ready, right, for the Aquarians. At the end of this video, make sure to check out, of course, the sample of what the report can be. And don't forget about the promotion this weekend. Okay, so let's see now for the Aquarians. That you're going to see here a flashing of calendar of events that we put in together. So you will see what are the crazies, okay, the craziest thing that is about to happen. Okay, we're going to discuss first planet by planet things that would be um, affecting you this month of October as far as a retrograde planet is concerned because what, some will go direct, some will go retrograde, and it's just bonkers. So let's just explain first before I go to the read that what a retrograde is because it's, I mean, like when I was learning astrology, I don't know, is it really going reverse? How can a planet go reverse? But it's not, okay? But it's still hard to explain. It's still hard to understand. Okay, so if it's not going reverse and it's still going to the same place, but it's, you call it retrograde, why? Let's just say um, your mom, okay? If your mom lives in the East Coast, I love my mom, okay? You be good and you're in the West Coast. You be fine, right? But mom's moves right now to Midwest. Okay, neighboring Arizona, California, Arizona, instead of, of New, New York or Boston, hi to everyone there, right? Instead of, of Maryland. So when it gets closer, it affects you too much. Too much, mom, you're too near. California, Arizona, I can, you know, you get a little bit shaken up with mom, can check you out anytime. What you're doing, you know? What are you doing? <laughs> so that's what a retrograde is. Far from the sun, closer to earth, we get more affected. Did it go reverse? No. It's still the same. It's just there, but it's closer to us. So it's very easy, right? I make astrology easy to digest here. You'll have laughter and you'll have fun. <laughs> okay. So now you know. So um, let's see now as the retrograde is coming. Mercury retrograde September 9, going direct on October 2nd. Shadow phase is very challenging when it goes stationary. Shadow phase, think of it where your boss is in the office, right? And you heard the boss move, stationary, moving, because it's about to 5 o'clock, right? Very dangerous. Do you clock out first or you wait for the boss to clock out and then you just, you know, then that's stationary because it's very dangerous at the 5 o'clock for you to make sudden movement. Because the boss might say, you're going out, are you done with your work? So it's best for you to just sit in that cubicle, let it play out, let the boss ride that Mercedes-Benz that he rides, or, and then he's gone. So October 2, direct, give it five more days, October 7, when the planet has already gone, and then you look into the window and you tell all the people around you to work, he gone, let's go. <laughs> then you can make your decision. 
that's stationary. Okay? So it's very dangerous when the boss hasn't left at 5 o'clock because then you will find out with more work. And then it's like, yeah, more work. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Does it make sense? So that's stationary for us. <laughs> you see, I told you. I make it easy for you. So now you would know what is stationary. Okay? Or how dangerous it is during the five days before and after a planet goes direct. Mm -hmm. So remember that. It's a boss going away, you know, and you may get into trouble. So Mercury goes direct. What, what's the importance of Mercury for, for Aquarius anyway, right? Well, Mercury is in charge of your dating. So your romance, your happiness, your joys, your hobbies. Um, it is also in charge of your luck. So is that important? I believe so, especially for people who's trying to date. So fifth house, when you, you know, I told this in other videos, in astrology, we own 12 houses. You're a landlord. You own 12 houses. Each house has a gift or has a tenant. The tenant that stays in the fifth house is Mercury. Mm -hmm. And Mercury here, when you open that door, love, romance, happiness, mantras, it's all just coming out from this door. And it gives you this whole laughter because fifth house is happiness. And also it's called Purva Punya, which is a past life luck. And it's also a Bhagya house, which is a luck opportunity. And this is also stock market and trading is uh, it, when you open this door. So how important is fifth house? And especially when you open it, the heart beats here. It's love. So that's how important fifth house is for you. And then you move, you know, like you see that Mercury rules two houses. So... In this 12-unit apartment that you own, you got Mercury owning another unit. And this unit is the eighth house, the house of secrets. So it's so secretive here, but it's retrograde. So what happened during the past month? Secrets out. Whoever has cheated, whoever has lied, you investigate. You found some truth to this, right? Eighth house for you is taxes also. Eighth house for you is your can be your in-laws. Eighth house can also be the intimacy, okay? But intimacy here more of like really um, bringing the soul from later to become a baby. But fifth house is actually um, progeny also. So for some, this probably is a time where you got pregnant or you're about to get pregnant. So be careful on that one. Eighth house is sudden changes. Remember that. Eighth house is unpredictable. So during this time that the retrograde was manifesting, you know, it's manifesting, you probably think like, oh my God, my life is upside down. You know, my life is upside down. But it's now about to just go upside and that's it. <laughs> so it's about to just go just the way it is. Meaning, mom goes back to East Coast, not in Arizona. I love people from Arizona. <laughs> just because it's California, Arizona. Okay? I love everyone. Just people would be thinking, what's wrong with Arizona? Nothing. Okay? I love Phoenix, Tucson. You know, I've been there. I frequent a lot in Arizona. Uh, Flagstaff. Oh. So, um... So that's that one. So it goes direct, things in the romantic life, those are the eighth house, you know, things that you're occult, mystic, spirituality, eighth house. So you probably learned your chart, your 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 life, you know, in, in divination. This is eighth house for you. Okay. So that's something that is going to be moving on in this month of October. Next, if we have is we have Saturn. Okay. Now Saturn can be a little bit of a tough teacher for us. Not a teacher though. Jupiter and Venus is a teacher, but you know Saturn is teaching you something right now. When it's retrograde in your twelfth house, okay, it's telling you because when you open that door, the house, the twelfth house, it's travel, foreign land, and also a house of losses. Everything you look into that twelfth house, think of it like it's a well. You know, like a like the well for the water. You put there, and doesn't come back anymore. You drop a coin. And then nothing, because it's a house of losses. One thing with Saturn, though, in the 12, is like it restricts things from losing. So Saturn here in the 12th house performs very, very well, but it was retrograde. So retrograde, it's too much. You probably have too much losses during this time, meaning money, okay, could have been an issue. Now, when you open this door again, you will see hospitals. So 12th house is isolation. This is, you probably have been visiting the doctor. Right? So there was the time where you frequent, I need checkup, I need, I need this, I need that. Because I feel here that you were working too hard. And then, I'm looking at the aspects now, guys, but I'm not going to say it anymore. But then, you know, it's because you were overworked. So what is Saturn teaching you? Slow your roll, sushi roll, Aquarian. <laughs> and that's how easy it is to work with Saturn. Slow down. 
Okay. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Saturn is saying is like, calm down. What's the rush? Okay. So that is the 12th house for you. As it goes direct, um, delays in travel. Um, you will be succeeding in any kind of losses. Um, you know, it can be legal matters. You will win um, litigation, but I'm not a lawyer, of course. Always consult your attorneys. Um, what I'm seeing here also is like you were also budgeting. You were trying to control your spending, okay? You're trying to control your spending. You were also, from what I'm seeing here, had issues with, or if you were trying to go for education, remember Saturn is the slowing things down. Um, that's why they called uh Shani. Shani is a, uh, I believe it's slow. Okay. Um, so Shani over here is slows things down. And even in your career, in your progress, even in the in the part where, let me just see here. Yeah, even in the part where, you know, like there are things that you wanted to get a break, you didn't get it. Mm -hmm. So these are things that has been slowed down. And once I be uh, once probably by um, I know this October, but it would be much more better for you to take a leap of faith or chance on a lot of things so you're not swimming against the grain with Saturn over here when Saturn moves into Aquarius. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be next year, okay? Saturn moves to Aquarius. So, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what's going on. The next planet, enter Jupiter. Has been retrograde July 28th and about to go direct. November 23. That's still far, okay, from us, how it, when it goes direct. Now, let me just see here for you guys, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so with Jupiter going direct, okay, it's about to. Now, Jupiter, you would feel this because it's the biggest planet. It just, um, it just gives us everything, all uh, right, like everything that we can probably uh, you know, like it's for me, it's it's always just making things bigger out of proportion. What is good with this one is like it was in the house, second house for you. So you open that door again, Aqua. What is in the second house? Who's here? Who's the tenant? Jupiter. So as you see your tenant over here, which is Jupiter, and now visiting only because this is a transit. Okay. Um, it's about your eating habits. Mm -hmm. The overindulgent of sweets, chocolate. You know, that's Jupiter. Um, you may have this for the past year, and it's going to go until next year. Um, so be careful in sugar stuff. Now, second house is savings, finances. Uh, um, this is a time where you will have people that support you, people who's going to be there for you. We want an, uh, a much more easier planet to be with in the second house. So this is good. Think of it this way. You have two friends. Okay? You were drunk at a party. There's one friend that would say, I got your back, holds your hair, or the other one that would say, I told you don't drink. I'm not going to bring you home. You can't be riding in my car. Not supportive, right? That's your other friend because she drives a G-Wagon. Now, your other friend over here drives a Prius, okay? And she's the softer one. It says, like, it's okay, girl. I got you. I bring you home, okay? That's Jupiter in a second, a soft planet. So let's just say you have Mars over there. And that's the other friend who's just like, well, I'm going home. <laughs> so you're just going to be, you won't get the support, okay? You get the aggression, okay? So Jupiter is a sweet, you know, sweet planet, okay? So this is good. You get you get the support of the family. You get the, you know, you get um, some money, some savings over here. But during the retrograde, it was tough. But now as it goes direct, you're going to get the blessing. But that's not the only thing that Jupiter owns as a tenant, okay? You would look also at your 11th house. So money, and for, uh, you know, could be, have been fluctuating. When you open that 11th house, it's your network. People who, um, how do you say, you associate with. And also house of income. So income-wise, money-wise, and savings-wise, it may become easier, okay? Because I don't know your Dasha, your under Dasha. As soon as November 23, <laughs> I'm scratching my head off. And you're like, I'm dead, so I can't wait that long. I can't wait. No, you can't because at least we know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So hold your horses there, okay? So um, let me see what else here, okay? Should I move to Mars already? I think, yeah, I should move to Mars already because I can look at the aspects, but I feel like let's, let's leave it to next time. Now, Mars goes erratic. Oh, it's going to stay in, it's already in Taurus for a long time now. It's going to go retrograde. Mm-hmm. In your fourth house. So how's the relationship with mom? How's your car? 
car issues, car trouble, renovation at home, you're building a home, you just feel impatient at home, you're just always hot, you know, you can't sleep, you feel like, ah, oh, what is going on here? Um, why you got upset with your partner? Why you guys broke up? This is this whole transit. Okay. So Mars here is a little bit out of control because it's trying to be controlled by an earth sign, Taurus. Okay. And Mars rules your third house. And also, of course, it rules your um, third house and your 10th house. So this is a house of your career, right? So you want to change your career. I have this big idea. I want to side hustle. I want to do this. Well, it's about to go retrograde. You will feel this enormous energy. You know, it's just like wanting and growing within you. And from what I'm seeing here, you may start a business, but it's more out of like just an influx of energy. You wake up and I just want to do it, you know? But that's a problem with Mars. You have three siblings. One is the smartest. The other one barely thinks. The other one is like, eh. One is a scholar. The other one just goes to school because parents says so. The other one rarely goes to school, barely. That's Mars. Mars has no discipline. It does not think. That's why it doesn't like Mercury. Because Mercury is logic. And that's why it doesn't want to obey. Just like Saturn. Saturn follows. Saturn is to see, let's do this process. Mars will skip that process and let's just get it done. I'm just too hot for this. You know, so you have this energy with regards to relationship. You have this energy at home. You have this energy at work. And that's going to last for a very long time. So what do you do? I need you to go out, take a breather, go for a walk, exercise, burn that excess energy. So cycle. I don't know. Start mountain climbing. But be careful though, okay? Because Mars is cargo for accident also. So be careful in that, those activities. You may feel, if you're married and you're in a happy couple, you may feel this little bit, uh, you know, like feeling the heat for your person. You may feel that. So those can be managed by moving that energy somewhere else instead of going and attacking your mom, your person, or your love, and people at work. So be careful on that, Aqua, okay? So what else am I seeing it for you? Um, we have the lunar eclipse. I'll make that in the solar eclipse. I'll make a separate video. The full moon is October 9 and um, new moon October 24. Let me see. Do we care if about your Mercury, if it's exalted? When I say do we care, is it important for you right now? Let me see. Um, hmm, no, not really an exaltation. Venus, is Venus important to you? Well, you know, I think you should still be fine there. The combustion of Mercury. Um, I feel like that's, you know, it doesn't much affect you. Okay. So, as I read to all the specific dates, make sure to write that. But what import, what's important also is to write in the comments, what do you think? You know, because I'm doing this right now. Um, I've done this before. But the purpose is this, actually. When you get your chart in the description box, you know, but you will see it also in next, this next, the next video, that we can go hand in hand learning together when I do the Astro 101. The Astro 101 is like, I go live, I discuss the chart, and then we both learning at the same time. Okay, because I would discuss certain topics and then we can all be in the same page looking and learning. I mean, like reading and learning together. Okay, so everything is going to be down there in the description box below, like what I mentioned. And next, excuse me, <laughs> and next to this, okay, you probably have Mars combustion. It's it's a uh, high acidity. <laughs> okay, uh, and next to this is the demo of what a chart is when you get it. So I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm so happy that you're here to see what we have installed for you. So when you get in the description box and then you get the chart, let me just show you a brief okay, introduction on what you will get. So first thing first, you need your time and place of birth, okay? Um, and then once you got that, you can see here that you will get um, the planetary details. Now, what is your ascendant sign? Where is your sun place? Where is your moon? And at the same time, the nakshatra and all those uh, other information. Now, you will see also in your chart um, interpretation where what is the nature of the planets? How are they, you know, in each of the houses? So this is going to be like a very lengthy report. Um, it's almost like 40 um, something pages um, that will be um, describing different um, planet interpretation based on where it's uh, placed in the houses in your chart. So 
Um, after that, once you see that, you can all, you will also get the interpretation of what are the gemstones that is going to be good for you, um, what are going to be the lucky day for you. Um, there's some lucky numbers that is good for you, um, the lucky stone, the lucky color. And then there is also the auspicious dates and months that is going to be good for you. Now, the recommendation for gemstones, once you get into that report, um, it can give you the life stone. Okay, it can give you also the sub uh, gemstone because some of the gemstones are very expensive. Now, um, there's also going to be the fortune stone for the bagya, meaning for luck and opportunity. So there's a lot in this report that you can definitely, uh, you know, enjoy, you know, learning about yourself. Um, and then once you have, of course, um, your chart, you know, what's good here is that I am going to be doing the Astro 101. Uh, we already have done it where there is a time where I go live and then we can interact and there are questions that I will be able to answer depending on the subject that I'm doing for that um, video. And it's, it, oh, it's live. So once you get your report, then you know there are times where when I start doing the Astro 101, then we can learn together about what is, in, what is going on in your chart further, okay? So for everyone who's wondering, you can get your chart um, in the description box below. So if you get the Astro Nova, I believe there's a special promotion. I believe it's like somewhere around 75% off, which is such amazing, amazing, amazing investment for yourself. And it can it will also have the 2023 um, prediction already for you, ready. Okay, so go there. And then this is just only for this weekend. So make sure to check it out. And I'll see you.